to Buenos Aires. Hola amigos, Javier here for Home of the Earth. Wearing a hat that I dare you to find on somebody else. Not exactly appropriate attire for the city, but I could not find my smaller cap this morning. So, Buenos Aires is the capital of Argentina, which is a country that is 500 years old, 300 years under Spanish rule, and 200 years of independence. Some of the architecture might look Spanish, uh, but none of it is actually built under Spanish rule. And that is because at the time when uh, Buenos Aires declared its independence, uh, they decided to destroy all the previous uh, Spanish architecture which was not that grand. It was mostly adobe, so kind of a mud uh, buildings. And this is because Buenos Aires wasn't one of the more important cities for uh, Spain. And they initially uh, came in uh, through the large river here that goes into the Atlantic Ocean and called that the Rio de Plata. And they called that because they were expecting really big things from uh, this region, uh, plata means silver, uh, they were also expecting gold and other minerals um, that had been found elsewhere in South America, but pretty much next to nothing was found here and there were already uh, indigenous people here and they were very hostile to the uh, uh, Spanish being here. Uh, so Buenos Aires did not really develop early uh, like other colonial cities have in South America. More important cities were mostly um, the port cities in Colombia and Venezuela, the kind of viceroyalty capital of Lima, as well as Peru and Bolivia in general, just because those are where the mines were. So the late 1800s and early 1900s is when uh, the majority of the really uh, kind of big symmetrical Spanish looking buildings such as this one here were built uh, but the tradition of kind of not respecting uh, the history and the architecture that with some really relaxed urban planning uh, I guess policy has led to a city that is pretty eclectic in terms of uh, architecture. As you can see, there's a mix of all kinds of styles of just, maybe this is the best example here. There's a building that's just uh, offices and next to it, some really uh, classical European style architecture. So that's something that you see throughout the city and it's kind of, uh, a unique and interesting blend. Here we have the Roman Emperor Tratano, who was actually born in Spain. And this is not a random selection for this monument. It is kind of reflective of Argentina, specifically Buenos Aires, because um, there's always been a kind of sentiment that um, that of wanting to be more like Europe as opposed to uh, the traditional kind of indigenous ways of the Americas. And this is because most of the world viewed the Americas as kind of a um, lesser civilization, to put it mildly, uh, terms like savage or barbarians were even used. Um, so this explains uh, not only Buenos Aires architecture, but also their policies uh, that are really uh, favorable and encouraging 
um, European immigration to Buenos Aires uh, just to make it like uh, more European in uh, every way possible. These large parks in the middle of the city, some, something reminiscent of Europe. And the administrative powers of Buenos Aires actually built a whole hotel just to accommodate new immigrants, a place where they could stay and even get free food while they were looking for a job and a place to stay. And Buenos Aires received a lot of immigrants, especially during and after the First World War, which naturally uh, crippled a lot of the economies of European countries. And at that time, Argentina was doing very well. Uh, they were exporting a lot of uh, food to uh, European countries and they were neutral in the war, so they had no participation. So it was a good place for all to immigrate to. Um, the biggest groups that made it to Argentina were uh, Italians and Spanish people. They also received significant numbers from um, really almost the majority of all the countries in uh, Europe. So previously we were in the Recoleta district of Buenos Aires, which mostly houses um, administrative buildings and, and business offices. Currently we are in the Gadido district, which is a mostly residential uh, district. This is one of the older, more impressive mansions that was built during the time where uh, the city moved further north, at least the people with money, because of yellow fever uh, in the more southern part of the city, which was previously the center. You don't really see uh, mansions like this in Buenos Aires, it is kind of an oddity that has since been purchased by the uh, government and now they're trying to resell it again to private investors for uh, which are going to try to turn it into luxury apartments So as you know, you might know Buenos Aires has a very important harbor also has an important train station which connects to the train system that goes throughout Argentina which is important when you have a very big country. This infrastructure was built in the uh, late 1800s, 1880s more or less and the main purpose uh, was to get all of the agriculture, agricultural products, so wheat and beef that was being built in the Pampas of Argentina, which is the fertile lands uh, that go from Buenos Aires all the way to Patagonia, and ship them off to Europe, to places such as England, uh, which actually built that tower over there. Also helped Argentina build uh, their train system because uh, Britain had a lot of experience in building them and also they had an interest in our, the Argentinian um, economy developing because at that time uh, the UK was uh, in a booming uh, industrial revolution so they had a lot of products and they wanted to uh, sell them to foreign markets so it was a deal that uh, ended up working for both parties quite well and all of this uh, is what um, kick-started uh, La Belle Epoque which means uh, the beautiful period which was kind of Argentina's 
um, period where they were the most uh, economically affluent. In fact, they had uh, the sixth biggest GDP per capita during this period. So this was a great time for Argentina. But the only issue is that their economy was very reliant on exports. So when uh, there was the international crash in, I believe, 1929, um, this affected the economy a lot. So the people's favorable opinion of the government kind of went down. And this is what led to the coup in 1930. Uh, and that's when uh, Argentina had its first military dictatorship. 1930s was the first point that uh, Argentina was under a military dictatorship, uh, which they had to go through six more of them, uh, which obviously doesn't really lead typically to a uh, great political stability, which affects the economy. Uh, so the 1930s was the beginning of Argentina's kind of uh, downward slide. Things are a little bit uh, dirtier here around the Congress because there is a demonstration going on. And apparently right now in early 2019, there are protests and demonstrations pretty much every day in Buenos Aires because of the economic situation. So people want to voice their frustration and with uh, just maybe the situation and maybe the, the government feeling that uh, they might not be uh, doing what they feel uh, is right to turn things around. like that uh, so a lot of people like that uh, there's some other elements that people did not like quite as much uh, but people really seem to love uh, Eva Peron specifically uh, she was a singer and an actor and, all, and as well as a political figure in fact when she uh, passed away at the young age of 33 her funeral lasted 16 days uh, because there were about 2 million people that wanted to uh, say their goodbyes to a woman that they loved. And appropriately, today her mural is on the building which is the Ministry of Health and Education, two things that were really important to her. wide avenue that we are on right now it's called Nueve de Julio which is means 9th of July which is the date that w that Argentina declared independence from Spain and this avenue until 2006 was the widest in the world until it was dethroned by an avenue in Brazil 
Still really big though. Now we are in the park called Plaza de Mayo, surrounded by some pretty important buildings, such as the National Bank. And this building here, which as you might be able to tell, is of colonial origin, one of the few in Argentina. And this used to be a really important political building or the most politically important uh, for Buenos Aires at the time. A time where um, Napoleon had just kind of conquered uh, Spain and given the power over to his brother, uh, Joseph Bonaparte. So for a while there was kind of confusion as to what the col colonies in Latin America should do. And there was a meeting here in May where they decided that uh, they would remain loyal to the King of Spain, but for the time being, until things were resolved in Spain, that uh, they would uh, become autonomous, which was kind of an important first step uh, towards independence uh, for Argentina. Another really important building in this plaza is La Casa Rosada, which means the pink house. You can probably tell why it's called that. And it was not picked because it's a nice color. At least I wouldn't say that. Uh, it's because a lot of the buildings at the time that this was built uh, had this color or similar to this. Uh, because they were made out of adobe, which is mud. So La Casa Rosada is actually the presidential palace, so the offices of the president of Argentina. Not where he lives, but where he works. As well, uh, as, well as his team. as well as its history and a little bit of the history of Argentina that I had not previously touched upon added in, in there for extra fun facts. So coming up on the channel will be some more channel, uh, more videos of Buenos Aires. Looking forward to seeing more of this interesting city both visually and historically. And if you'd like to see more videos of Argentina and Chile, and you'll also be able to find the other Buenos Aires videos there, uh, that's all on my uh, Chile and Argentina playlist. So you can find that by going on my channel page and selecting that playlist by clicking on playlist or Maybe it's even on the home page, just scrolling down. I was here as part of my journey bicycling from Canada to Argentina, to Patagonia specifically. If you'd like to see everywhere that I went and everything that I did, I have an interactive map over on my website, followthehumoftheearth.com, where you can click on the different locations and see the blog posts and videos I've made of those places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures, you can do so by subscribing to the channel by clicking on the red button below the video. All right, so that's gonna do it. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.